at the team who will always wanted to make the derelict more enjoyable and fun for the player. The new addition of the planetary nav mesh makes the designer able to put uh, life on the location. Before it was just kind of a ship just there on the ground, but what we wanted to do is to create a link between the ship and environment around. We decided to make them more like a settlement, to have like more story around them. It's like walking in the woods and just sometimes you just found the old cards all rusty there with the leaves and the trees all around. That's the kind of feeling we wanted to do with, with the Delirics. For us designers, a lot of opportunity to make the location more FPS friendly with cover more like a mission friendly so we can add uh, stuff on top of that when you will arrive at the sh at the crash you will see a big trail on the ground so if you look behind the ship you will see all the big tree but in, in the trail all the trees will be small and we we're going to have just small rocks and grass and it's the purpose the ship was there when you go back in the ship, because you will be able to go back in the ship, you will rediscover the ship as you were before, but in the older version. That tell a lot of story about the old technology, kind of giving a second life to the ship. We got an update on the planetary nav mesh now on the planet, so we are allowed to put AI on the ground. Putting NPC in this location that are park air, trying to take the best of the location, scavenging for resources. So when you will arrive there, you will feel then some people living there since a long time. That's going to give you a feeling that all that place around is just kind of habitated by some people. The mission we're going to do on those ships, if it's a hostile mission, we're going to have some kind of faction there. It's living there, we'll just to take control of the ship. And it's not an hostile mission, there's going to be a different kind of faction. We see all the feedback we receive on January when we start like showing the concept of the Derelict Settlement with the EI team for the Planetary Nerve Mesh and uh, all the team in uh, Turbulent. We was able to like uh, create a habitation module. We have tools now to be able to generate and procedurally place all this work on the planet. It's just the beginning of the long term plan that we have in mind to populate and uh, add more and more location uh, in the PU. And uh, I'm super proud of my team to do in that with the design team, the art team. We worked super hard, pretty proud of that, and I'm sure that people will enjoy it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> the new inhabited derelict settlement for 317.2 is not the only one uh, that will be present in this patch. We will let the player discover them and uh, find them uh, in the universe. The Crashed Reclaimer derelict settlements are just one of the new mission-enabled, gameplay-focused environments from Turbulent arriving in the upcoming Alpha 317.2. And we encourage you to explore the Stanton system and find additional ones on your own. Hint, some of them are still floating out in space. And when you're done exploring, the fine citizens of Orizon will need your help when the newest dynamic event pits the dreaded Ninetales against Crusader's security forces. Now, while we'd prefer you discover most of the details for yourself on the PTU and live servers, we do have a brief introduction to perhaps the biggest and most elaborate mission in Star Citizen yet. Siege of Orison is an event where we take away all of your most overpowered toys, which are your ships. You actually have to use your reactions and your guns and your teammates to hopefully survive this perilous encounter. We wanted to do what for FPS combat, we did for ship combat with Xenofret, push it to its extremes. So without spoiling the event, uh, the Siege of Horizon is a dynamic event which takes place around Horizon on some floating platforms owned by Crusader and, you know, we shuttle players in to help out Crusader take back their islands. When we was making the mission, we wanted to I mean, first of all, we wanted to make a, a fun mission that pulled people in together to play together. You know, experience something they might not have normally. In most missions, you go up against 10 AI and you really don't get challenged. A lot of our missions 
do a lot of hand holding where we mark everything for the player and you know they can sort of disengage to a level and just like walk to a marker and you know presume the rest of it this one i wanted to kind of go right here's no markers now think and try figure it out for yourself the event is primarily a pve mission there are systems in place to discourage pvp it's not something we protect against because we want the players to protect themselves from it we're not discouraging it but we're not actively supporting it yet there's a lot of new spaces we've made for us in, and working with design on, on the block out and still making sure it's all in keeping with, with what Orison is. We look to expanding the visual library of Orison. What we really liked was the contrast of this, this kind of idyllic, you know, relaxing garden platforms floating around and, and this kind of battle scarred you know, damage and things like that adding to them. So it, it was a it was a lovely kind of contrast to put in. We don't normally have content of this scale. The main challenge or the main challenges were performance. By moving it far enough away from like the center of the city of Horizon, we managed to um, avoid most of that. You know, having this here helped to improve and push performance because we found issues and we was able to quickly fix them. The experience I hope players get is enjoyment, mostly. I want players to feel fun and create like emergent stories with their friends that they can you know, tell on Reddit or through videos and whatever, just have fun really. I, I want them to see all the effort that has gone into like healing and gunplay and AI over the years that you may not notice fighting against a small amount of people. Events in general are great because they pull people who might not play with each other together. You all feel like this comradeship trying to push forward against this enemy that you all have in common. It's an experience unlike any other in this game. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that those fantastic derelict concepts we showcased earlier this year are already making their way to the Persistent Universe and that they're coming along with new missions and gameplay made possible by the new dynamic planetary nav mesh. And that the Siege of Orison is the next big step forward towards bringing additional gameplay to Star Citizen's existing landing zones. Now, don't forget, there are a number of contests going on for both Alien Week and our upcoming Battle of the Bricks, which will see the community teams from both Star Citizen and EVE Online come together in a live stream on July 22nd to raise money for charity. You can learn all about both of those things on the robertspaceindustries.com website. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. This is the very noisy ninth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, soon to be home for our Manchester studio. And what, what goes in the center here where all this noise is? It's gonna be something to see when the time comes. We'll see you all next week. Amanda, just use whichever one of these has the least interruptions. We're not going to get this clean. Pardon me. Fish tacos. <laughs>